up your hands and give the Lord a mighty clap of praise. Yes, we can do it better for Jesus. Yes, we have to worship Him, give Him power. Give Him praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Tell your friend for me, you are in the right place. At right time, for the right purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because of time, I want us to maximize the moment that we have. We have a great man of God. Apostle Richard Mayanja from Uganda. It's a big blessing to us every time. Sir, we do not take it for granted. We thank God for you. You are sent by God to us. And every time you are always a big blessing. And I want us to know that it's a great privilege. This is a man of God that is much sought for. Ministering in conferences all over the world. And recently he had a powerful event in Nairobi. A great occasion where the vice president was also invited, him and the vice president of this country were the guests. And I'm telling you, we are honored to have him here. This is a man of God you need to listen. And not only listen with your ears, you listen also with your heart. This week is loaded. Make an appointment with destiny in this place. And the devil will be proven a liar. And even the mothers-in-law. <laughs> Praise God. Every day this week is going to be powerful. In the evening we are having even session. Even from five. Make an appointment with destiny this week. Are you ready to receive God's servant? Are you ready to reason? Even with your heart. In the joy of the Lord. Let's put our hands together. As the man of God comes over. Well, praise the Lord today. I'm very excited. You can be seated if you can. I'm very excited to be back after after one year. I was last year in uh, in August, isn't it? Yeah, last year in August. It has taken a year before I came back. But uh, you have uh, always been on my heart. Always. Amen. You've been always on my heart. Bishop Karuki is a dear friend of mine. I like the spirit in this man. That alone can bring me here. He has a sweet spirit. Sweet spirit. Amen. Very sweet spirit. When I was young, I would accept every invitation. When I grew up, I don't accept every invitation. You find that when you are young, you yearn to doors to open for you. Amen. But when, as, as you walk with the Lord, you, are, you, you begin to ask God to close some doors. Because of the spirit. You become more sensitive. You become extremely sensitive. But I'm comfortable every time I come here. Amen? I'm very, very comfortable. Praise God. It's going to be a week like no other you have ever experienced. God willing from tomorrow or tonight, it will depend on how I will handle what I'm going to say briefly. I want to teach you tomorrow, every evening, every evening, somebody say every evening, how you can rise or raise your energy levels 
of the spirit. It's your spiritual energy levels. You're going to discover why some people speak things and they happen instantly. And yet, we are all believers. And when, you, when others are stopping the sun, you can't stop malaria. You will discover that. And by the time we are through with that, I will leave you very powerful and you will declare things and they happen like this. Are you listening to me? How many of you want to speak things and they happen? Oh boy, you will discover great, great truth. Great truth. Praise God. So the week is going to be extremely, extremely powerful. I'll preach to you the whole week. Then I'll preach next week somewhere briefly. My sons have organized for me a holiday in the best hotel in Malindi where they only host celebrities. You come with your own chef. Amen. Then I will go for holiday. Don't I deserve to go to holiday? I think I do. Praise Jesus. Wow. Eight obstacles to abundant success. Eight obstacles to abundant success. These are bottlenecks that you need to know. In Jesus' name. I have a feeling that all of you want to succeed, don't you? I think you do. The Bible says in the book of John 10.10, 10, that is our foundational scripture, that a thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus, one of his assignments, why he came, is to give us life and have it more abundantly. In other words, abundance is one of our spiritual heritage. Unfortunately, very few Christians have access to abundance. abundance and they don't know why things are happening contrary to what they believe. So the Lord has sent me here to help you understand why abundance seems to not to come your way. Amen? When you look at the richest people on the planet today, majority are non born again Christians. I was looking at the richest women this morning. On the face of the earth, the 20 richest women, they are all whites. None is black. Whether in America, I used to think Oprah Winfrey was the richest. I discovered that she doesn't even feature in the 20 richest women on the face of the earth. She doesn't have much money. She only has $1.5 billion, but she makes a lot of noise. I noticed that most people that I saw in the list of the 20 richest billionaires as women, I don't, I had not even, I, I think I had only heard about one. The rest I had never heard them. So that means you don't have to make noise to make news. Amen. Some people make much noise, but they don't have much news. And praise God. The first obstacle to abandon success is an unteachable spirit. An unteachable spirit. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Another version renders it this way. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Perish for lack of knowledge. Information transforms. Information transforms. People who appreciate knowledge, they can never be poor. 
Look at any nation today that has embraced information. It is a nation that is rising. Some years ago, the richest man in Africa was a white man from South Africa. And then came Dr. Mo Ibrahim, the man who started Celtel and sold it for $3 billion, is half black, half Arabic. Then came some other Egyptians. Even many years ago, when Khashoggi was the richest man in Africa and also probably in the world then, he was not a black man, he was an Arab from Egypt. Currently, the richest man in Africa is a black man from Nigeria. He has $14 billion and is only 53 years. Why is it that we have billionaires emerging from black communities? When you look at Nigeria today, it is a nation that has embraced education. The truth is, Information empowers, empowers. The size of your wallet is going to be determined by the size of your information. If you don't know much, you will have less. A wise man is strong. And yes, a man who increases in knowledge will increase in strength. It doesn't matter your geographical area. I've discovered that destiny does not answer to geography. Wherever you are, if you have the right information, you will enjoy abundant success. Praise Jesus. So you need to embrace knowledge, my friend. There are two types of knowledge that I want to bring to you. The first one, we call it wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom simply means learning from the mistakes of others. You look at people and you see their mistakes and you learn from them. There should be people in this world who, perform, who make mistakes before you. And as you look at them, that will improve you because you will not do the same mistakes that they did. That is called wisdom. As you are walking, you need to learn from other people. The next level of knowledge is called experience. Experience simply means learning from your own mistakes. From your own mistakes. If you will ever succeed in every area, of your life you've got to learn in every 24 hours to edit your life you've got to sit down and begin to look at how you have behaved in 24 hours you know you've got to be your number one critic before anybody points a finger at you point it at yourself then you will be great in life are you listening to don't wait for people to criticize you. Criticize yourself before they do so. Perform. How did they pour it? Let me not use a mathematical language. But I want to say that you need to sit down and you look at yourself and you begin to tell yourself this was wrong. This was wrong. My best book ever was written by a great man of God who had some grave mistakes. But he dared to write a book that touched me. That book is called I Was Wrong. That is a book for me. I was wrong. He begins to outline things that he used to believe. But after the downfall, he said, I was wrong. You need to learn to edit your life before anybody does it. The Bible says if you judge yourself, you will not stand before the judgment of God. 
You've got to tell yourself I'm wrong. In this continent, the word sorry does not feature in our vocabulary. You rarely hear fathers telling their children I'm sorry. You rarely hear wives and husbands telling each other I'm sorry. But I suggest today that you begin to point fingers at yourself before anybody does it. So in every 24 hours, when I'm alone, I begin to look at myself and uh, point fingers at myself. Some people fear criticism. I don't. I don't. I like constructive criticism. What made Billy Graham one of the most influential people in the world is because he has 80 people and their work is to criticize him. Full time. Somebody is employed to offer criticism. Men don't just rise. They have serious secrets that move them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 80 people, after he preaches, they sit with him. And they begin to point out, Dr. Graham, this example you gave was a little bit carnal. You mentioned that name. The entire world trembles. I heard Joel Austin say, when I first met him, I thought I was looking at Moses. It takes criticism to make such men. If you hear me, say hear. So we learn to criticize yourself. You've got to learn from your own mistakes. One of the ingredients that made David a man of great honor is when the prophet pointed at him and said, you are a man. When you look at your Bible, you are going to discover that every time God anointed a king, he also anointed a prophet at the same time. Not for fun. Criticism. Elijah Ahab, Nathan, David. There was no day God anointed a king without anointing a prophet at the same time. In this life, in order for you to enjoy abundance, you need to have some people around you who tell you that is too much. If you don't have such people, you will never be the man God intended for you to be. Glory to God. Number two. Borrow it. An obstacle to abundant success is unpaid vows. Unpaid vows. According to Ecclesiastes chapter four, chapter five, verse four to six. Unpaid vows. Vows. I'm yet to visit a church where they don't have records of people who pledged and never fulfilled. I'm yet to visit one. I'm yet to visit a place where believers never took, took envelopes and they all brought them back. I'm yet to visit one. Unpaid vows. When I was 10 years in ministry, I remember I was praying on Christmas morning. And the Lord told me, stop praying because I want to talk to you. He told me 10 years ago, you stood in a church and pledged by faith. You say that if I gave you this amount of money, you were going to bring it I have given you much money and you've never remembered to pay that vow after 10 years after how many years 10 years 
that showed me that indeed God is very serious. We are not. He is. He said to me, correct that. Do it immediately. As you grow in the Lord, there is a level of stupidity you cannot handle from you. That is the truth. When you are young, things happen different. When you mature, for example, there are people who hear God every day. I envy them. I don't hear him every day. I asked him why when I was young he used to speak to me every day and he would tell me to open even a particular scripture. Read this one. It will help you. Nowadays he doesn't do that. I asked him why. He said that when you are young you draw the attention of the parent every time. When you grow you don't draw that kind of attention. I said, okay. So those of you who hear God every minute, you are not mature yet. The Lord has told me to eat. The Lord has told me to go to the bathroom. The Lord has told me. <laughs> he told Abraham, walk before me. Walking before somebody, it means you are ahead, is behind. <laughs> when you grow, he doesn't speak a lot. He holds you responsible for the revelation that you know. Hmm? Amen? At one time, Job said, man, I look to the left, I can't see him. To the right, I cannot perceive him. And yet, he knows everything that I'm going through. And then Job concluded, when he's through with me, I'll come out as pure gold. When you are young, you are moved by feelings. When you mature, you are moved by faith. You believe that he's here, even when you don't feel him. Amen? So he told me, pay your vows, pay your vows. The Bible says in Psalm 50 verse 14 to 15, offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Then call upon me in your day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Pay your vows. Tell your neighbor, pay your vows. Say it again. God holds every man responsible for his promises. Some years ago, Dr. Yongicho, who pastors the largest church in the world, 1.2 million people. That's a super congregation, isn't it? In Korea, where his church is on Sunday, there are streets that are closed. For any other person apart from the members. Hmm? He borrowed a book from a certain man, a missionary from America, and he never brought it back. Many years, almost 20 years later, the Lord is speaking to him in prayer. He said, son, you are preaching faithfulness. But I hold something against you. He said, what, Lord? He said, 20 years ago, you took a book from one of my boys. Promised to give it back to him. That missionary came to America. He left this country. You never gave him back his book. And I hold that against you. Do you see how God is serious? One of the things that are limiting or that is limiting believers to enjoy abundance is permanent borrowing. 
Let me take a drink. Permanent borrowing. You take a cassette from the bishop's house, you don't bring back. You, <laughs> you say he has many. So, how many of you want to have abundance? Take it back. Tell your neighbor the cassettes are going back this week. Back. Books are coming back. <laughs> And Yongicho said, the missionary left and I didn't even hear from him. But I had to go to America, trace the man until I found him. I told him, I have your book. Let me tell you today, the things that move God are not the big things. There are those small, small details that we despise. The Bible says little foxes are the ones that destroy the vineyard. Not the big ones. These things of, I'm coming back. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll, I'll bring you your money. Don't, don't talk things when you're not serious about it. Please don't. And paid vows. Number three. Unforgiven offenses. Unforgiven offenses. Forgiveness is not a suggestion. It is a requirement. It is a requirement. Jesus says in Mark eleven twenty five to 26. That when you stand to pray. The first thing you need to do is to forgive. When you stand to pray. The first thing you need to do. Is to forgive. Before you present your prayer request to God. The very first thing you need to do. Is to forgive. It is said that every man of God who lived up to 80, that when you talk to them, they will tell you the greatest secret they discovered is forgiveness. That men of God who have lived to that age, they have discovered this walking in love and forgiveness. Even when you don't feel like forgiving, do it by faith. When I stand to pray, I usually tell the Lord, I forgive those who have offended me without my knowledge. Because who tells you that everyone loves you? People who hate you for all the reasons, all the reasons. There are those who hate you because you look good. They really do. We can be in Africa gossiping a man in America who, who doesn't even know that we exist. Hmm? We offended of him. The first thing you need to do is to forgive. Number four. Unwise association. Number four obstacle to abundant success is unwise associations. Proverbs 13 20. He who walks with wise men shall become wise. But a companion of fools shall suffer harm. A companion of fools shall suffer loss. Your future is entirely dependent on the people you call friends.
Your future is dependent on the people you call friend. Who is this person you call my friend? May I say to you, whoever cannot increase you will eventually decrease you. Any person who cannot increase you will eventually decrease you. If anybody does not value your time, he will never value your wisdom. I suggest then that you should have ten commandments for relationships. People need to qualify to come into your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? People need to qualify to come into your life. Not everyone who greets you, then from that day you call him my best friend. You need to be mean about relationships. Because the tears we cry today, they are not caused by demons. They are caused by human beings who are allowed to come into our lives. We, human beings we are allowed to come. Last Sunday, last Sunday I was preaching in a church. And when they drove me back, I told them, do you know that in your church, you are the second past people to come to my house? And they have known me for many years. They, they, they are only three people from their church who know where I live. They were very happy. I told them, not everyone enters here. People qualify. <laughs> Qualifications for relationships. If you behave that way, you will live better and suffer less. Love everyone, don't trust everyone. Don't. We are crying today because of such people. I have a friend whose marriage is failing because of a woman she picked from the street. She was not a believer, pretended to be a believer. Now she's the one who is breaking her marriage today. Do you hear what I'm saying? She heard me say this and she said, you saw me crying? It is because of that statement. That the people will quickly... Let me tell you, 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 you don't need to have too much love. Too much love kills. Don't have a Messiah complex. You, hmm? you died for nobody. You died for nobody. Tell your neighbor, you are not Holy Ghost Junior. Hmm? <laughs> you can, there are people you cannot help. Next time I come in here, I will tell you 10 people you can never help. <laughs> Your assignment is directed to certain people, not everyone. There are people who want to be holier than the Bible. But, not me. Not me. I'm a happy boy. I'm a happy boy. <laughs> happy. The, the problem, the problem with most Africans is that they don't know how to say no. But it is costly. There are people who come to you and you, 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 you frankly tell them, I will not be able to do that. Yeah. And you will still make it to heaven. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and wise associations. This is how you can recognize unwise association. Can I tell you? 
Number one, those who are more critical than they are complimentary and encouraging. Much as we love criticism, but at least we need people who criticize us in love. But the person who always criticizes you, criticizes you is not a good person. So those who are more critical than they are complimentary and encouraging, they are unwise associations. Can I go to number two? Those who belittle and laugh at your God-given goals and dreams, they should go back to the village. They are not going to be your friend. Number three, those who embarrass and humiliate you, let them look for the next address. Those who consume your energy and time through useless talk, And this is how you can recognize wise associations. Those who see the validity and beauty of your God-given dreams and goals. Those who see the validity and the beauty of your God-given dreams and goals. Those are wise associations. Go for them. Number two. Those who speak words that build your faith and confidence. Those are good people. Those who speak words that build your faith and confidence. Number three, those who get excited about your potential. Every time they see you, they see a great person. They are very excited. Number four, those who remind you of your specific or your special gifts and abilities quickly write these things in five minutes I'll be through the fifth thing that will hinder you to have abundant success is an unbridled tongue an unbridled tongue or if unbridled is very complicated let's talk about an untamed tongue amen an untamed tongue, a tongue that restrains itself. You don't speak all the time. You know how to keep quiet. Some people are good speakers. They are not good listeners. Thank God you are good listeners. I'm speaking. Praise God. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life. They are in the power of the tongue. And that those who use it will reap its fruit. Write also Proverbs 18. Still 18. That one I need to read. It's a good one. Eh? Let me read it for you. 18. Verse 6. 18, 6. It says, a fool's lips enter into contention. And his mouth calls for blows. Huh? How can you? <laughs> oh God. Verse 7 says, a fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are a snare of his soul. The tongue is a force. Our body responds. Our body responds to sounds. But our spirit responds to words. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you this in a minute. Free of charge. If you want to, how many of you want to know this? Uh, let me put it well. If you want to know that people are talking against you, you don't need to be there. I learned this from Delic Prince. He told us that the best way you can know that someone is talking against you is when you feel your spirit grieved. Because our spirits respond to words. Even when you are not there, as they speak those words, your spirit can capture them. Okay? So use your tongue wisely. What we hear, we think about. 
And what we think, we feel. And what we feel, we eventually do. And what we do becomes our habit. And our habits eventually determine our destiny. Write three things down quickly. Number six is called undeveloped abilities. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Do you see a man who excels in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Undeveloped abilities. I'll come back to that as I finish. But let me give you these two. Number seven is an uncommitted heart. James 1, 6, verse 8. A double-minded man should never expect to get anything from God. That's what James says. Commitment then generates authority. Number 8, obstacle to abundant success is stealing God's tithe. Malachi 3 verse 8 to 12. When you still tithe, the Bible doesn't call you an ordinary thief. You are not a pickpocketer. You are a robber. In fact, one of my ten commandments to sleep in my house, you have to be a tither. Because if you are not, how can I trust you with my TV when you are capable of breaking God's house and rob from him? You were super robber, so you, I can't keep you in my house. A robber? Oh, yeah. I don't keep robbers in my house. But I said I will fin go back to number six. Undeveloped gifts and talents. Undeveloped gifts and abilities. Most successful people spend time sharpening their skills. Recently, a basketballer retired called Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal lives in a house that looks like no other. It, the doors of his house respond to his blood. They don't use keys. Blood. You can imagine such a house. Eh? Blood. When he comes and he touches the doors, they respond. On many acres of land. A mouth millionaire. They say it every time Shaquille O'Neal is a basketballer. Every night Shaquille O'Neal will go to his basketball court. Which is also in his house. On his compound. And he begins throwing that ball in that net. For about 4,000 to 5,000 times. Before he goes to bed. Because whatever you do daily, you end up mastering. You can never rise above your daily routine. The people, tell your neighbor, the people you admire, they don't sleep the way you sleep. When you are sleeping, Shaquille O'Neal is throwing the ball 5,000 5, times. One hour of playing or 90 minutes of playing professionally. Behind it, there are almost 10 or thousands of hours of practice. Of practice. This one hour you see has investment behind. Okay. The same with Tiger Woods. He, he, they say he wakes up at 3 in the morning to go to the golf course. He hits that ball. So you see him for one hour and you are like, wow, a man is gifted. There is something you need to add on your talent. Talent is not enough. You need to add something on your talent. It is called practice. Practice. I wasn't born an eloquent speaker. I have tried to do practice. Do you hear me? When I enter the hotel room, I don't sleep early. I sleep very late. That's why I use the best food supplements on the face of the earth. Because I need to 
to keep my body well. Are you listening to me? So that when I don't sleep, I know which supplement to take. I am very, very informed. But if you don't want to die a local champion, if you don't want to die local, let me tell you, don't sleep early. Do something. With that time. Miles Munro is one of the most gifted speakers of our day. And he says every week he reads five books. Every week. In Africa, we don't do that. You clear college or university, we make a party for you. Graduation. In Makerele University, you see boys drunk with their gowns. They have finally arrived. <laughs> you are... <laughs> the, the boy will never touch a book again. He has arrived. Yet millionaires who pack their own jets, they will read five books every week. Any man who has the age on knowledge will have the age on wealth. You can't be richer than your head. You cannot. <laughs> you cannot. If you put nothing in your head, you get nothing out of that head. Let me finish. Ah. <laughs> Oh, glory to Jesus. Practice. You were not born a gossiper. You started one day. <laughs> you started one day. But look at your level now in gossiping. If you can divert the same energy into something positive, how far will you be? Eh? Nobody was born a gossiper. You started in class four. Slowly, you started gossiping the teacher. And now, you, now you are gossiping. You have graduated. You gossip men of God. <laughs> I pray for you that destiny will never disappoint you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you are blessed, give God a big hand. Oh, wonderful. We needed that, isn't it? Let's be on our feet, everybody. Now, in the evening, God's servant is going to have more time. We just need to be here. That is the price we are paying. Just being here. God has loaded him. God has equipped him. All we need to do is to do, be here. Let's lift up our hands and talk to the Lord to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. That nothing is going to stand before us. And what the Lord has prepared for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you Father. We thank you King of Glory. Thank you for your word that we have received this afternoon. To shape us. To make us. To change us. In the name of Jesus. I think we can pray better than that. Just talk to God. Just allow God. Just allow the Holy Spirit. To make it sink in your heart, in your mind. Bringing forth a transformation. In the name of Jesus. For your word is a light. Let this light now begin to lift every simple man. In the name of Jesus. Making us and shaping us and changing us. Transforming us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. We are not going to live under the privilege that Lord you have given unto us. Thank you Father. Thank you King of glory. I refuse to be small. I refuse to live under. I want to become all that Lord you brought me here for. In the name of Jesus. To fulfill my purpose. 
in the name of Jesus, unstoppable, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Just lift up your hands in a better way and just talk to him and tell him, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Let the one that I've received this afternoon work in my life, that I'm going to be a doer and not just a hearer, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you. One more time, let's give God a mighty hand of praise. Now that is not a mighty hand of praise, above our heads we give the Lord a shout of praise. Even for the way he has spoken to us. Amen. Praise God. Let's serve the Lord this afternoon with our offerings and our tithes. And God is going to be a very faithful, just like he is in our lives. As we keep our vow. Amen. <laughs>